Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. Welcome to our latest episode, the UAE's new corporate income tax law and what it means for UAE trusts and foundations. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. As some of you may be aware, the UAE passed a corporate income tax law in late 2022, and it came into effect of June 1st of this year, 2023. How the new UAE corporate income tax law impacts UAE trusts and foundations is obviously a hot topic. In this episode, I'm gonna be discussing how trusts and foundations are treated under the UAE's new corporate income tax law, which income is subject to tax, as well as some tax planning strategies. I'm also gonna discuss some of the ambiguities under the law that are creating some uncertainty at the moment. So let's get started. The UAE's tax law applies to local companies as well as free zone persons. So a free zone in the UAE is a designated and defined geographic area within the state. Now, a free zone person is a judicial person incorporated, established, or otherwise registered in a UAE free zone. Now, this clearly includes foundations in ADGM and DIFC because they're free zones in a designated geographic area. What's unclear, however, is how this new UAE corporate tax law applies to foundations formed in RAC ICC, because RAC ICC technically isn't a free zone, it's only a corporate registry. That's still something that's gonna to need to be clarified. Now, the tax law also defines the concept of a family foundation and it makes it clear that a family foundation just doesn't include foundations, but can also include, and actually does include, trusts. And specifically, it includes trusts with a legal personality. Now, as some of you may know, trusts generally don't have a legal personality because they're contracts rather than incorporated entities. Now, the UAE has a federal trust law. Now, the UAE has a federal trust law, and Trusts formed under the federal trust law are incorporated trusts. So I think that the UAE corporate income tax would clearly include trusts that are incorporated under UAE federal tax law. What's a little bit unclear is how trusts formed in DIFC and ADGM are treated because they're not incorporated. They don't have any legal personality. As such, they may be considered tax transparent. Now, the tax law does specifically reference that some trusts may be considered fiscally transparent. In such a case, a fiscally transparent trust is likely not a taxable person under the UAE's corporate income tax law and is itself not subject to taxes. Rather, the potentially the, the settlor or the beneficiaries would be subject to the tax if there are any taxes. Now, if they weren't residents of the UAE, they probably wouldn't be liable for any UAE income taxes. And because the UAE doesn't have any personal income taxes, beneficiaries and settlers that are residents of the UAE likely also wouldn't be subject to any income taxes. The question is though, what happens if this is a discretionary trust where no beneficiary has a defined interest in the trust? And what if the, the income is accumulated? how would the income be allocated between the settler and, and the beneficiaries? And would it happen in, in the current tax year or would it only happen when the income was actually uh, distributed? That's something that remains to be seen. We just don't know yet. So now let's move on a little bit. So we've talked about free zones, we've talked about free zone persons, and now let's talk about what a qualifying free zone person is, okay? Now, a qualifying free zone person is a free zone person that maintains adequate substance in the UAE, derives qualifying income, has not elected to be subject to the corporate income tax, conducts transactions with related parties at arm's length, 
maintains any necessary transfer pricing documentations and meets any other condition prescribed by the minister. Now, a qualifying free zone person, and I think the key that's going to impact most trusts and foundations is whether or not the free zone person is receiving qualifying income. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So a qualifying free zone person is taxed at a rate of 0% on qualifying income and 9% on non-qualifying income. So let's talk a little bit about what qualifying income is. So qualifying income is income derived from transactions with other free zone persons, except for income derived from excluded activities. So basically what this means is if you have a trust or foundation in a free zone that receives income from a, a, an entity in another free zone, that's going to be tax-free unless it's an excluded activity. Now, this is where it gets a little stickier. Income derived from transactions with non-free zones persons. So this is basically income received from anybody else, anybody that's not a free zone person, is going to be considered qualifying activity, but only if it comes from a qualifying activity that is not an excluded activity. So we're going to be talking about what qualifying, what a qualifying activity is next. So a qualifying activity is manufacturing of goods or materials, processing of goods or materials, holding shares and other securities, ownership management operation of ships, reinsurance services that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, fund management services that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, wealth and investment management services that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, headquarter services to related parties, treasury and financing services to related parties, financing and leasing of aircraft, including engines and rotable components, distribution of goods or materials in or from a designated free zone to a customer that resells such goods or materials or parts thereof or processes or alters such goods or materials or parts thereof for the purposes of sale or resale, logistics services, and any activities ancillary thereto. Now, excluded activities. So excluded activities are always going to be uh, subject to tax, right? So excluded activities are any transactions with natural persons except transactions in relation to the qualifying activities that we just talked about. Banking activities that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, insurance activities that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, finance and leasing activities that are subject to the regulatory oversight of the competent authority in the state, ownership or exploitation of immovable property other than commercial property located in a free zone where the transaction in respect of such commercial property is conducted with other free zone persons, ownership of or exploitation of intellectual property assets, or any activities that are ancillary there too. So I know that might sound a little bit complicated, so let's try to clarify it a little bit. So foundations and trusts, and I'm talking about trusts with legal personality. So presumably we're just talking about the trust and incorporated under UAE federal law are gonna be treated as companies under the UAE corporate income tax law and they're going to pay 9% income tax on any income that's not qualifying income. Now, since foundations and trusts are generally used as holding structures to manage and protect wealth, there's only really one qualifying activity that would result in qualified income that would not be subject to tax, and that is income from the holding of shares and other securities. So presumably, that's going to be if you have a trust or foundation that is holding shares or other securities, the income from that would be qualifying income and would not be subject to the 9% corporate income tax, would not be subject to tax, would be subject to 0% tax. So when you think about holding shares and securities and other securities, when you talk about holding shares, right, we're talking about the two types of income that would come from that are, are dividends and capital gains. Those would not be subject to tax. One of the issues, though, is that income from the holding of other securities would also be tax-free, but the term securities is not defined in the tax law, so we don't know what that is. So all other income would be subject to tax, right? So 
you basically, if you have a trust or foundation, income from the holding of shares or other securities would be tax-free. Other income would be subject to tax. So it's possible, for example, that interest would be subject to tax. Or let's say you own gold or cryptocurrency or something like that within your trust or foundation. That would also be subject to tax. Now, again, what we just talked about is what would happen if the trust or foundation was treated as a company? For trusts that are treated as fiscally transparent, like I said, those likely aren't going to be subject or those won't be subject to the corporate income tax at the level of the trust, but potentially at the level of the beneficiaries or the settlor. Again, because the UAE doesn't have any personal income taxes, that likely wouldn't result in any UAE income tax to non-resident beneficiaries or settlers, or even to resident beneficiaries or settlers. The problem is, when is the income going to be allocated? And how is it going to be allocated? That isn't quite made clear in the UAE tax law. Now, there is one tax planning strategy for trusts and foundations that are considered companies under the UAE tax law. And that is that they can make an election to be treated as an unincorporated partnership. Now, an unincorporated partnership is not a taxable person, right? So there's no tax at the level of the partnership. Rather, the partners themselves are liable for their share of the partnership's income. So when we think about this in the context of a trust or foundation, presumably it would be the beneficiaries who would be liable for any tax of the foundation that elected to be, or trust that elected to be treated as an unincorporated partnership. But again, we'd run into the same, well, let's back up for a second. So assuming that the partners are liable for the, the, the tax on the income earned through the, through the partnership, non-resident partners or beneficiaries would likely not be subject to any income tax. UAE resident partners, the beneficiaries, would also likely not be subject to UAE tax because there's no personal income tax in the UAE. Again, the problem arises, how is this income supposed to be allocated to the beneficiaries in the context of a discretionary trust or foundation, right? Because if you have a trust or foundation, if the trust or foundation just distributes all of its income to the beneficiaries, then it's clear that those beneficiaries would be liable for any tax on the distribution of all the income that they receive. Again, likely no tax because the UAE doesn't have any personal income tax. But what happens if the trust or foundation accumulates that income? Is there going to be some sort of a, a method on how this is distributed? Or would the beneficiaries not become liable for any potential tax until the trust or foundation made an actual distribution? This isn't clear at this point, but I'm sure clarification will be forthcoming. So to recap, we've covered how trusts and foundations are treated under the new UAE corporate income tax law, which income is subject to tax, tax planning strategies, and the ambiguities under the law that are creating some uncertainty. If you're thinking about setting up a trust or foundation, you should give the UAE a serious look. It's a great jurisdiction, but given the new UAE corporate income tax law and how it applies to UAE trusts and foundations, careful consideration to the tax implications of doing so needs to be considered. In fact, I wrote a Bloomberg article about why the UAE is such an attractive trust and foundation planning jurisdiction. I'll put a link down in the description. I hope you found this episode useful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.